Here's our final example on momentum and impulse. A pitcher throws a 143 gram baseball towards a batter at 24 meters per second. If the bat hits the ball with a force of 7 kilonewtons and contacts it for 1.18 milliseconds, then how fast will the ball leave the bat? This again was another previous diploma question and it really requires you to think about the situation before you go and just put the numbers into the formula. The ball is traveling at one direction towards the batter. When the bat hits the ball, the ball is going to travel in the opposite direction. So again, we need to account for that. How is your force being applied and which direction is that force being applied? Very similar to example number two. This case, we better make sure we account for that direction. So first off, I'm going to start with the mass. The mass has to be in kilograms. So I'm going to change 143 grams to 0 0.143 kilograms. Start with that. We know that the initial velocity is 24.0 meters per second towards the batter. What we want to know is how fast this thing's going to go in the opposite direction after. Now how do you figure this out? Well the force of the bat is going to oppose the motion. So if we label the velocity traveling towards the batter as being positive then the 7 kilonewton force, which is 7.00 times 10 to the 3 newtons, has to go in with the opposite sign. And if you don't put it in with the opposite sign, you will make a mistake on your velocities because the force is opposing the motion. One of the most important things to understand with vectors. If you don't put those signs in, you will make mistakes. We have the time here, 1.18 milliseconds that it's in contact. So I'm just going to change that to the proper units times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. So the key in this case is again understanding the situation. Force opposes motion, therefore it goes in as negative. Just like a friction force is another way you can look at it. So if we use the formula that we've talked about with impulse, force change in time equals mass change in velocity. What we want to do is find the change in velocity. Then once we know the change in velocity, we have the initial velocity, we can find the final velocity. So the change in velocity here will equal to force change in time divided by mass. Put the numbers in. Negative 7.00 times 10 to the 3 newtons times change in time 1.18 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds divided by the mass of the object 0 0.143 kilograms. If you punch that in, we'll be able to figure out what the change in velocity is. That's not what the question's asking for, but we need the change in velocity to find the final velocity. So put in the negative 7 exponent 3 times 1.18 to the exponent negative 3 divided by 0.143 and you should get negative 57.76 meters per second. That's our change in velocity. Now change in velocity equals VF minus VI. So if we work this out final velocity will be equal to the change in velocity 
plus the initial velocity if you manipulate that formula right change in time final minus initial change in velocity final minus initial that's what change means from what point to what point final subtract initial so the final velocity will be equal to negative 57.76 meters per second plus 24.0 meters per second so the final velocity will end up being negative 33 if we go to the right significant digits negative 33 point uh, I guess we go to three significant digits so negative 33.8 meters per second now again that's indicating direction the ball is going to leave in the opposite direction it came in at that's what that negative sign means but again when you look at the question it says how fast well how fast is reference to speed it's not how reference to a vector so therefore we can then write the final velocity not as a vector 33.8 meters per second but notice if you didn't put the negative 7 in for the force you would have ended up adding 57 to 24 and you would have got a much higher velocity that is why you always have to keep thinking of the force diagram so that you can remember that the when the force is with the motion it's going to speed it up when the force opposes the motion it's going to slow it down and maybe change its direction depending on how much force is being applied this was a very tricky question on that diploma exam cost a lot of students a lot of marks because the other answer on the test was if people forgot to put that negative 7 in that was one of the other choices so be very careful when you read the question how the direction changes in these questions and you'll see that come up in a lot of different cases now that you finished the three examples look over the examples in the workbook there's a couple more that you could go through and complete the exercises in the workbook I think it's pages 5 through 10 Questions 1 through 20.